So, namaste one and all. Namaste one and all. Uh, namaste. To be, to, to be able to sit in front of uh, this August audience, uh, my seniors, my all the teachers, and I'm basically from uh, North Karnataka, Bijapur. I just stay two kilometers away from uh, BLD Medical College, and I studied in uh, BLD. And it's my mother institution, and it is. It brings me a great, uh, uh, a warm feeling inside my heart. Where I, I am talking to you as a, uh, you know, a small part of my journey to yoga. So it's very interesting when. Uh, so I did post MBBS. I got uh, my uh, MD pathology and. Uh, MD in uh, forensic medicine, which I was not very much interested, uh, searching for something different. And when uh, when I see India as a total as a country, India is known for uh, yoga, Ayurveda, and spirituality. So that's what attracts uh, people to India, and uh, vast diversity of Indian heritage. So that I used to <clears throat> get attracted very much. And one sentence of uh, Swami Vivekananda. Like uh, combine the best of the East and the best of the West strikes my mind, and so we are already into best of the West, modern medicine, conventional medicine, and I wanted to do something add on, mix masala or uh, you know add some hatke uh, kuch karna hai. So that kind of mind is inclined towards uh, integrative medicine, and that's how I got into MD in yoga and rehabilitation from a prestigious uh, Swasa University. Which is uh, I was the first MBBS doctor to do that. For for an MBBS doctor, it was little easy and uh, comfortable. I'm very happy to see all all of you, <laughs> so all my seniors. So it is very uh, unusual path which uh, took me away. I am totally off uh, from the conventional medicine, but still the roots are there. After my MD in yoga and rehabilitation, I was uh, I also did my MS in applied psychology. And to combine uh, the different aspects, so this was my journey past 14 plus years, and I was inclined to go out out of India. So this I took this, and uh, most of us will get bored if we are not giving any statistics. So in our healthcare, it constitutes two healthcare systems. Which most of us are not aware. Even even if we study, we are all we are studying from uh, the European Revolution kind of a school, colleges, and all. Where we are part of it still, we have to uh, revolutionize the education and health in India. So, so uh, there are two healthcare models. First one is biomedical healthcare model, which says that. So all of us, what, whatever we study, more than 90 plus percentage, all the schools, colleges, it's the biomedical healthcare model, where for each disease, we consider the body part. For eye, there is eye doctor. For bone, there is a bone doctor. For nerve, there is a nerve doctor. For stomach, there is a gastroenterologist. So we segregate the body into multiple specialties and super specialties, and then we treat or study. Second healthcare model is bio psycho socio spiritual healthcare model which is most neglected part so bio psycho socio spiritual healthcare model these two healthcare models in my uh, in my journey i combine these two in addition to the yoga and the western psychology to give it as closest possible evidence based uh, uh, therapies as possible. I call this as a medical yoga because I'm a medical doctor and then teaching yoga. So for each disease, I categorize, I design, device the uh, mind-body therapies. So going to the statistics, WHO statistics for uh, NCDs, non-communicable diseases, it states that 41 million people die every year because of the diseases which can be prevented. So it constitutes about 70 to 71 percentage of all the global deaths. So that is. So, uh, so Jyoti, you want to. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. We'll start yeah, uh, by. We'll start now, sir. 
Namaskara to one and all. On behalf of Center for Yoga and Exercise Science Department of Physiology, I, Dr. Jyoti Kodnapur, Coordinator, welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Ramesh Mudol, sir, Pro Chancellor Dr. Arun Inamdar, sir, uh, Dean Faculty of Medicine and Principal Dr. Arvind Patil, sir, Medical Superintendent Dr. Rajesh Vanitki, sir, Registrar Dr. J.G. Ambekar, sir, Vice Principal Academics Dr. S.V. Patil, sir, I welcome you all. I would like to extend a special welcome to our invited guest speaker, Dr. Shashikant Kumbar, sir. I welcome you, sir, for today's uh, guest lecture. Uh, we are blessed to have Dr. Isav Ishwar Basavreddy. We are blessed to have Dr. Ishwar Basavreddy, Director Muraji Desai National Institute of Yoga to chair today's session. Thank you, sir. I, I welcome you, sir, for today's session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I welcome uh, all faculty members. I welcome faculty members of BLD, DU family and other university for today's session. I welcome you all once again for today's uh, guest lecture. Now we'll have brief introduction about our today's uh, chair, uh, chairperson and speaker. Dr. Ishwar V. Basavreddy, sir, is the director of Murarji Desai National Institute of Yoga. Ministry of Ayush Government of India, New Delhi for the last 17 years. Sir is the head of Institute Yoga Certification Board, Ministry of Ayush Government of India since 2018. Sir is Project Director, WHO, CC Traditional Medicine Yoga since 2013. Sir had the additional charge of Advisor Yoga and Naturopathy, Ministry of Ayush Government of India during 2019 to 2020. Sir also had the additional charge of director CCRYN from 2010-2012 and 2019-2020. Sir is the president of National Yoga Sana Sports Federation, recognized body of government of India and senior vice president of International Yoga Sana Sports Federation member, governing council of Indian Yoga Association and many other government and non-government organizations. To name FIV, member of ICCR, ICMR, UGC, NCERT, NCTC, IGNO, SAI, member of Railways, member of MHRD, TKDL, Fit India, etc. Dr. Basavreddy, sir, having done MSc in Physics, MA in Philosophy, PhD in Yoga Philosophy, and also has got two PG diplomas to his credit, one in Yoga Education and another in Computer Applications. Sir has more than 33 years of experience in yoga education, training, therapy, and research. Sir is one of the eminent yoga masters of India and instrumental in bringing common yoga protocol for International Day of Yoga. Sir has imparted yoga education, training, and therapy to more than 1 lakh people of all sections of the society and have participated in hundreds of national and international conferences, seminars, and presented research papers and delivered lectures, lecture come demonstrations, conducted yoga workshops in India and abroad. Sir has completed 10 major research and development projects, published more than 12 research papers, 28 booklets, 10 monographs, evaluated hundreds of research projects as member and chairman of different research project evaluation committees, took in initiatives to establish five advanced centers for yoga education, therapy, and research in premier medical institutions of the country and provided disease-specific yoga research protocols for the projects. Sir traveled abroad such as South Africa, Russia, Hungary, China, Thailand, Hong Kong, North Korea, Austria, Germany, Turkey, Italy, France, etc. Many times I presented Muraji Desai National Institute of Yoga and Government of India. Sir is instrumental in establishing 159 yoga wellness centers, four yoga therapy centers in tertiary hospitals, 20 yoga wellness centers in CGHS, dispensaries and four yoga centers in SAI Stadia. Sir was the master of ceremony giving yoga instructions to more than 40,000 people including Honorable Prime Minister of India at Rajput, New Delhi, which went on to create two Guinness World Records. He was the, also the master of ceremony of International Day of Yoga celebrations at Lucknow, Dehradun, Ranchi, etc. Several initiatives have been taken up under the Stewardships of Basavreddy, sir, 
for the promotion and development of yoga across the country and abroad. We are honored to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. Thank you so much. Sir. Here I present Dr. Ishwar Basavraddi, sir. Now we'll have brief introduction about Dr. Shashikant S. Kumbar, sir. Sir is a proud alumni of our BLD DU family. Sir has completed MBBS from our own college in April 2005, MD in yoga and rehabilitation from Vivekananda Kendra S. Vasa University, medical hypnotherapy, basic and advanced training and certification. Sir is experienced in family physician and general medical consultation and treatment. Yoga, yoga and application of complementary and alternative medical systems in evidence-based way in most of mind-body related diseases and medical hypnotherapy. To name few achievements, sir is the first MBBS doctor to do MD yoga and rehabilitation in the whole world. Started an integrated holistic health center which integrated yoga in stress management and other diseases along with other systems of medicines. Started epilepsy and yoga research in Spandana Holistic Health Center in collaboration with Department of Neuroscience Narayana Fridayalaya. Started school-based yoga and health integrated service for different schools. Trained students of yoga and BNYS students in teaching anatomy and physiology in S. Vyasa University, Bangalore. Worked in the cancer and yogic psychotherapy and medical doctor in, uh, in world biggest yoga and health center, S. Vyasa University, Bangalore. Medical officer for one month for world's biggest Kurg hockey tournament conducted in April 17th, 17th to May 10th, 2010, establishing world's largest yoga and integrated medical center in Kurg spread, spread over more than 380 acres of lush green coffee land, conducted workshops in scientific yoga and mind-body techniques in Malaysia for about one month from June 6, 2011 to July 6, 2011 through Malaysia Yoga Society and UCAC. Innovation, innovative invention of combination of modern medical knowledge and yogic principles together. Conducted yoga and stress management workshop, workshops in Malaysia, China, and India. Establishing a new yoga therapy center in association with Mount Yoga Center in China. Medical director, I am well company. Here I present Dr. Shashika Kumbar, sir. Thank you, sirs. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. That was elaborated, uh, detailed introduction. <laughs> now I request Dr. Uh, Ishwar Basavreddy, sir, to kindly chase today's session. Thank you, sir. Uh, namaste, madam. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, sir of the uh, very esteemed university. <laughs> and uh, respected uh, registrar sir, dean sir, and all the faculty members, and my esteemed uh, friend uh, Shishikant, I'm very proud of you, uh, and uh, happy to see you on this platform, because uh, earlier college, now the university, it is very dearer to my heart, and you are the alumni, and also very few are fortunate to get such a platform to address uh, from their own college. So I, my best wishes, first of all. And uh, uh, just uh, I'm reaching the airport, <laughs> I told you, and uh, because suddenly everything has come in Hyderabad. So definitely I've listened to you and uh, I will hear. First of all, uh, uh, just to introduce, uh, uh, today uh, everywhere yoga has got... Uh, global acceptance uh, for uh, various reasons. Uh, one as a generally it is a fitness program, whatever we say, the spirituality or something. But when you go to the world community, it is a yoga first as a fitness. Uh, then it comes to the wellness. Uh, in India, it is a wellness program, especially in uh, US, uh, Europe and uh, some of the Asian countries. So it has a billion dollar business about yoga and wellness center. And third one, it comes to the uh, preventive medicine. Yoga is a preventive medicine. Uh, it has been proven from the ancient time. Whoever practice uh, yoga regularly, yoga means some uh, postures, 
some breathing uh, practices uh, then uh, relaxation and meditation so it, this is a package who are practice every day they can prevent many of the disorders uh, non communicable what popularly known as or lifestyle related disorders and most importantly uh, the another dimension in the recent past uh, in the uh, medical community it is the integration of uh, yoga in the healthcare delivery system so yoga goes with every medical system so where as an adjunctive therapy or complementary therapy so where it has the dimension to cope any disease conditions particularly non communicable diseases so therefore yoga uh, in ayush we are seeing many of the ay system don't have the acceptance by the other system because they are all uh, uh, everybody want to their system. but yoga is one system it goes with every system because of its uh, privilege to adjust with all these things so that's a wonderful opportunity uh, for the healthcare delivery system where we need the patient centric uh, treatment methods yoga is dominant last but not the least uh, is the health promotion so there is no uh, uh, limit uh, for the promotion of health so it may ultimately end in the spiritual quest so to know what i am yoga has that dimension but now here in the preventive medicine and the uh, management or as an adjunctive therapy there are more than 12000 uh, research publications in peer review index journal and many of them are present as a part on meditation which has started in the 80s by mahesh yogi and we have hundreds of research papers on uh, efficacy of yoga in the management of various disorders so with these we are you and uh, today's topic i do hope that uh, uh, dr shashikant will uh, throw a new light on the recent developments and the topic he has chosen for that so once he complete that definitely we'll uh, discussion and uh, we'll conclude so that the end of the talk uh, we can make some uh, recommendations uh, uh, we can take up some small research projects or case reports to substantiate the uh, today's lecture how the universities can go because uh, every day we conduct such type of uh, speech etc but something uh, outcome what is the outcome there is a enhancement of knowledge dissemination of knowledge but at the same time if you convert into the outcome based uh, lectures so end of the day we can take up some case studies or some small research projects pilots projects which leads to a major breakthrough research so that attitude that culture academic culture has to be adopted in all the medical colleges in yoga institutions so we have started it uh, in our institute is in a small manner every lecture we conduct we publish the synopsis we take up the point every year we assess then we started taking the small small pilot studies or case reports i do hope that with this uh, uh, i request the uh, esteemed speaker uh, dr shashikant kumar to start this is i once again uh, thank uh, all the uh, especially uh, uh, honorable vice chancellor sir and others just uh, it is two days and 12th we last our Brother, sir, it's uh, just one year or more, and uh, always is very dear to our heart. So I use this platform to once again pay my respect to very esteemed uh, departed soul, uh, Professor Brother. So with these uh, few words, and uh, I request uh, Dr. Sajikant to address uh, Delhi Valley. Thank you, thank Jai. You. Thank you. Thank you. thank you sir thank you jyoti thank you all the senior all my friends i request you to adopt namaskar mudra so we'll come to the topic directly i want you to hold your both hands together in front of your chest and adopt namaskar mudra as the topic says scientific yet spiritual so when you are holding namaskar mudra the very beauty of namaskar mudra says that the atman or the soul within me understands or recognizes the soul in front of you in front of me and i salute to that 
so that is a namaste that's very unique about india if i say this as a spiritual aspect if i say when you combine both of your hands together you are actually doing hemispherical synchronization both of your right brain and left brain are active simultaneously there are very few uh, conditions or uh, situations where hemispherical synchronization and information sharing between hemispheres is happening so one is this one is namaskar mudra so this is a kind of a, a, a hypothesis or a preview with which we call this as a scientific yet spiritual you know when i am saying by hemispherical synchronization it's a science when i'm saying namaskar mudra it is a spiritual so there is something I keep holding like this for few seconds there is something in mudra which was fascinated me towards uh, exploring the deeper aspects of mudra so so first of all you can keep holding the mudra for some time maybe one minute there is some difference going to happen in your brain so i'll be a little off so uh, there are around uh, 729 plus varieties of mudras mudras it means a gesture or a seal or an impression so another meaning of mudra keep holding keep holding i request you keep holding there is something is going to happen so i respect i re- request all the students to uh, pay attention to what's happening in their mind space so what i claim to be is the number of thoughts are going to reduce this is what i claim if somebody wants to prove or disprove should do some research with jyoti so that was all inclination or idea and uh, with assistance from dr basavraj sir and uh, i stream so I, re- i request some of the research to happen so some uh, you will make you feel very interested uh, intrigued by this kind of aspect so the one which gives you happiness mudita muda means happy dra means to give the one which gives you happiness can be called as mudra so after the face the hands are the second part of the body which is used for communication anywhere everywhere and hand is most commonly used for all the forms of therapy the department changes but hands are same and all the physio uh, physiology we study that motor homunculus and uh, sensory homunculus you will find a very big big thumb and big hand person you know you you are, you are familiar with the motor homunculus the big hand big thumb person who's uh, the motor cortex the thumb has the biggest space in the motor cortex sensory cortex so why is there is something in the hand there is something in the uh, in this aspect of mudra why these people are using certain gestures to communicate in certain particular way there is something essence which was kind of getting lost so i want you to release your hand and i want you to move your index finger there should be some activity otherwise uh, our attention span is 15 minutes i used to sit at the back of uh, the same room so i understand so move your index finger only move your index finger i'll keep talking only move your index finger now you move your thumb are you able to see some difference okay now stop and move your second toe without moving other toes see what's happening are you able to do it there is a gentle smile on your face that we are not able to do it because the uh, fine motor skills are highest in the hand compared to the feet so number of receptors are maximum in the hand compared to any part of the body this was what fascinated me towards uh, choosing mudra even though it is a uh, absolutely not explored uh, dimension of space in in the field of yoga nobody talks about it but there is something uh, which which fascinates you know so is there any link between is there any changes which are going to happen when you use your body uh, especially the part of your body which is having maximum number of receptors are you going to uh, stimulate certain part of the neuronal chemicals to act upon particular organ i i i do not know i i'm not sure so some of the research has to happen 
there's only one research in this is uh, people using surya mudra holding the ring finger and keeping the thumb on it they have connected the body part to the uh, biomedical uh, function analyzer machine so they found that basal metabolic rate increased when they did surya mudra so there are one or two research like that so hardly there is any research in this field so uh, sitting in front of you uh, talking to this august audience i don't know i do not want you to feel bored so i'll quickly state few research articles which will make you feel fascinated so first long term practitioners of yoga their gaba levels are high they find out the research i, I do not quote the research you find out and the people who are long term meditators their thalamic relay station is bigger there is something very fascinating some the thalamic relay station is larger bigger the people who are meditating for long the people who are doing yoga there is a recent uh, recent research article surya nam surya namaskara if somebody does surya namaskara slowly their diastolic blood pressure reduces we call it as slow surya namaskara diastolic blood pressure reduces fast surya namaskara systolic blood pressure increases and lipid oxidation is increased so something very fascinating why i chose yoga yoga unlike any other exercise for that matter yoga is considered for the western audience is just exercise but yoga modulates the basal metabolic rate if i am doing gym activities my bulk of the muscles will increase but simultaneously it will also increase my satiety center to add more food you agree with this so i eat well and i do exercise and i do not relax the muscles so much so there is a more of a isotonic exercise but yoga supports both isotonic isometric and other group of exercise gravity anti gravity agonist against antagonist all these forms of exercises yoga incorporates for example after swimming surya namaskara is the only exercise which uses more than 93 percentage of skeletal muscles something fascinating and nadi shodhana pranayama is the only breathing technique where sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous systems are stimulated simultaneously surya namaskara is the only group of uh, exercise where sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system are stimulated, stimulated directly simultaneously very interesting part so i call if i connect there is a difference where when you are doing lot of breathing technique if a yoga teacher simple yoga teacher might tell ha idu nadi shodhana pranayama maadi nange left nostril maadi right nostril maadi so and so but if you are exercising the chemical composition of your acid base system acid base balance you are doing breathing techniques sometimes you are exhaling longer you are throwing more carbon dioxide out it is going to stimulate your respiratory center so some some years before we had a famous uh, guruji coming so i am also looking in the form of guruji another 10 20 years i'll grow more beard and all those so those will those dimensions will do it not now but so that guruji we did kind of, a particular kind of meditation where there are some visuals we could feel so at this point in time i could connect that these visuals are nothing but excess of carbon dioxide is thrown out and there is a change in the acid base balance of uh, the body and it will stimulate your respiratory center and respiratory center signals your brain to add up the oxygen to compensate the change so this will uh, it will create a unique uh, exercise for the acid base balance so there is no exercise like that so that's how yoga fascinates so for example we do lot of exercise for our skeletal muscles is there any exercise for smooth muscles yoga has answer yes there are kriyas there are uh, internal cleansing technique where you have voluntary control over involuntary nervous system this is something absolutely fascinating voluntary control over involuntary nervous system on the ejection reflex vomiting gag reflex will do uh, anti peristalsis reflex we do in vamana dauti it is it is an a process when you do it on and off on and off you will have an control over the emesis vomiting system where you are voluntarily able to vomit it out so that's the process of yoga so ultimately in short the yoga is for chitta shuddhi mind control and with this mind control align yourself in a particular time and space where you will invite more higher energies 
your mind is very cleansed one uh, uh, homework for all the students find out number of thoughts per day there are various uh, claims 16000 20000 50000 thoughts per day conscious subconscious sleeping dreaming all inclusive how they have done research and and what are the research articles you find out so ultimately for the modern world yoga is useful in few ways i'll start with the statistics check out the who statistics of ncd non communicable diseases so 41 million people die every year which constitutes up to 71 percentage of total global deaths so amongst these there are only four major diseases which are responsible first is a cardiac hypertension mi and all second one is a cancer third one is copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease fourth one is diabetes only these four group of diseases are constituting to a uh, staggering statistical data of 71 percentage of global deaths are we doing anything for this absolutely not we our work as a doctors our work starts when the person is having a disease and our preventive medicine integrative medicine another homework for all the students are find out what is integrative medicine that is what is needed for you to be inclined with whatever your goals uh, dreams aspirations but keep in mind that there is something like called as integrative medicine which you should promote or you should be doing it that will give you boost to your career so there are two types of uh, healthcare system which i have already mentioned one is a biomedical healthcare system second one is a biopsychosocio spiritual healthcare model so i i only combine these two rather than we just prescribing medicine and then sending the patient out what i do is i prescribe the diet i prescribe the breathing technique i prescribe the relaxation technique i prescribe the medicines and then i send the patient out that's why i i include and number of uh, super specialties are so much increased that the amount of time given to the patient is less reducing there i find a gray area or a bridging area and another thing is most of the yoga teachers yoga masters whom so here we call they are all from non medical background and they they depict themselves as mystics and we medical uh, people our left brain will be thinking analyzing what is this so you know why they are behaving so and all those things there are so many questions for us so left brain oriented people if somebody gives us some simple simple evidences like gaba level site i told thalamic uh, uh, relaxation the number of receptor increases so these kind of things which will motivate us to take up that path but there are hardly very few people in this world who are really are inclined to do it for example most of the global uh, gurus so called gurus are they use the secret formula of adopting one of the method from vidyana bhairava tantra you can note down this uh, word vidyana bhairava tantra which depicts 112 meditation techniques they take up one of the meditation technique add some breathing part to it fast breathing slow breathing meditative part to this and then they make one, their own you know trademark things and they'll spread it out to the world that's all nothing wrong in that but nothing right also so coming back to our topic is uh, when i said namaskara it synchronizes your uh, right brain and left brain so it's something fascinating so at this aspect we will stick uh, uh, on to a yoga mudra so there are three categories of mudras dance mudra puja mudra and yoga mudra the one which we use for the dance somebody you know in dance forms the deer is dancing so they use the dance so shiva you know like that so dance mudras i'll take take off take it out of uh, the context and the puja mudras worshiping mudras we take it out of the context we'll only use yoga mudras so there are around 729 yoga mudras i teach around 450 plus yoga mudras and i use it uh, for the therapeutic aspect which one or two i'll tell you i'll share it with you <clears throat> okay so i want all of you to get up now 15 minutes are over our attention span is reduced i want you to do one next small experiment i want you to get up keep your both hands in front of your chest like this standing standing so extend your hands bring your hands in front of your chest 
keeping your eyes closed try to touch the index finger together you can get the attention span and is little aware of that so we are going to do it for five times one keeping your eyes closed two three four and five okay second take your hands up keeping your eyes open keeping your eyes open so notice the difference keeping the eyes open do the same one touch the index finger over your head you are analyzing the space and dimension that's the hint for you three four and five back keeping your eyes open no problem so do the same one two touching the index finger that's it three four and five okay release is there any difference you could see you can sit down please is there any difference you could see when you use the index finger in front of your when you use your hand over your head with the eyes open when you did this which one you felt you are easy to do it the approximating the index finger easy to do which one you find yeah one answer would be sufficient for me to continue over the head possible possible maybe right or wrong you have <clears throat> so the answer is brain uh, another experiment you do it at home or is uh, you standing and you are leaning forward like michael jackson you can lean forward much better i one second yeah i am audible no yeah the this space this space in front of your in front of your head in front of your chest this space has maximum capacity for the brain to understand with eyes open or closed does not matter so this space so most of the gestures most of the gestures of the body you say namaskara salam whatever you call in hi you say they are in front of the body not somebody is saying hi at the back nobody usually no so you take out the religion from the context of this uh, speech the front space of the body is more understandable by the brain so most of the gesture most of uh, the front part of the body is used so most time hands are used so i correlated hands with motor and sensory homunculus number of receptors you find out what it is the so thumb as a biggest area in the motor cortex as i repeat so when you use the brain uh, sir when you use a hand in a particular way it's my hypothesis is certain aspects of your brain certain uh, nerve plexus of your brain certain nuclei of the brain are activated and they focuses on certain part or organs of the body maybe maybe we need to add to prove this actually behind our body brain gets focus yeah fine just it's an experiment for you just find out when when you are leaning forward you are able to lean forward much better when you are leaning backward you try that your uh, space is limited you will not be able to lean backward so much you will be able to lean forward much better is it not so this space is used most often for most of the hand gestures coming back to the religious aspect uh, hindu hinduism so called hinduism and buddhism these two religions use world's maximum number of mudras holding a mudra in a particular fashion may trigger certain psycho neuron neural connections or certain metaphysical connections or energy changes energy the moment we say energy may be bioelectrical energy prabhavalay in kannada hindi sanskrit prabhavalay the energy around you the vibes so called vibes around you might change 
so mudra states that when you adopt certain gesture the energy loss total energy loss of the that particular part you are conserving and you are increasing the the biomagnetic energy of a person or an aura so all the process of uh, spiritual processes let it be any forms of fasting any form, forms of uh, sticking on to vegetarianism non vegetarianism all those every process is only to cleanse the body and increase the vibes aura so that you are able to connect yourself with individual consciousness with the higher consciousness in yogic terminology connect your jivatma with paramatma you know so that is the process of yoga so coming back to the applicability of this if i keep talking about this it will go on and on but i have more inclination towards the stress of uh, medical students one more research states that uh, in uk based research average life span of doctors is around 57 years okay is it uh, true or false you just check find out and amount of stress what doctor endures usually other uh, professions is very difficult they cannot endure uh, you know so much and modern diseases like somatization somatic symptoms are increasing as i already stated the statistics so with all this background and all this uh, statistics we i come to a, a point of view where uh, i teach certain aspects of certain breathing techniques i have one question for all the audience when we are angry what will be our breathing is it fast or slow so our breathing will be fast irregular erratic you agree with this when you are very calm and relaxed your breathing will be slow rhythmic regular so if this makes sense so i designed a kind of a breathing technique using based on the platform is based on the traditional yoga platform is traditional yoga traditional yoga uh, constitutes the system no system no system means you do whatever you want kind of no religion no system all those system means there is a patanjali and hatha yoga there are two systems usually people follow if they for, follow this particular system if they choose this particular system they may reach their goal so uh, yoga is applicable to all the believers non believer religious non religious people all the people so coming back to our concern is when the breathing is fast when you are angry your emotions negative emotions breathing changes and normal emotions breathing is normal so reversing that if i use a breathing technique where i use a rhythmic regular pattern of breathing in holding breathing out as an exercise format can i influence on the mind what do you say this is a hypothesis kind of hypothesis so we can jyoti you should uh, uh, note down this later on some research can be planned so i want you to follow this simple step i do not want to go uh, very deep into the mudra but uh, which, which will do it for the sake of doing i want you to do challenge in this is if you do this technique properly your number of thoughts are going to reduce okay so this is a technique where i compile this based on hatha yoga and other forms of yoga and the medical understanding keep your thumb in front like this thumbs up all of us other finger you hold and circle your thumb with other four finger hold the thumb tight release lower four finger cover your knuckle area thumb touching the middle finger if you can if you cannot no problem twist your hand hold it in front of the chest so this looks like a conch or a c shell so thumbs up four finger cover release lower four finger bend your elbow left elbow cover your knuckle area thumb touching the middle finger okay twist your hand hold it in front of the chest i'm sure that these techniques are very innovative you will not find it because it was compiled and designed newly definitely i took a lot of time for this holding the thumb 
i want to use a psychotherapy dissociation technique where you dissociate your routine thoughts from something neutral what is that neutral focus your awareness on the blood circulation of your thumb which you are encircling inside okay so this mudra is called as shankha mudra consciousal mudra gesture holding with this mudra i prescribe for example for all of us adults 4 seconds breathing in you can keep the back straight as much as you can 4 seconds holding the breath 4 seconds exhalation is one count keeping your eyes closed will help you to focus your attention towards the blood circulation of the thumb keep your eyes closed shift your all awareness towards the blood circulation of the thumb let us open our intellectual plus intuitive mind feeling and thinking mind both open i'll cater for the left brain and i'll also cater for the right brain synchronize this so for the left brain i'm using a dissociative technique thought dissociative dissociative technique where you are focusing your awareness on the blood circulation of the thumb now shift your awareness towards the breathing approximately 4 seconds for moments 1 2 3 4 moments maybe four moments you are breathing in four moments four seconds you are holding the breath four seconds you are exhaling i'll demonstrate once see it looks funny but still do it there's something about it so breathe in for 4 seconds hold your breath for 4 seconds breathe out for 4 seconds that's one count let us do it at least five counts breathing in hold breathe out breathing in hold breathe out breathing in hold breathe out continue to do so breathing in hold breathe out breathing in hold breathe out breathing in hold breathe out i request you to do normal breathing but keeping eyes closed keeping your eyes closed breathing normally can you feel there is little increased heat generated around the thumb change in the hemodynamics change in the blood circulation also changes the temperature locally so you are able to feel that local change in the temperature also feel and think your mind space do you think that when you are doing when you are focusing all of your attention about thinking breathing in holding breathing out is it true that other thoughts other random thoughts which were coming in naturally are reduced or stopped majority of the times it will be significantly reduced there is something called as the relaxation response even though we are medical doctors we never hear about this the quotation this research was done by dr herbert benson from harvard medical science this is the first ever research in the field of uh, uh proving the alternative systems he has done a research on tibetan monks changes in the body functioning changes in the breathing changes in the infrared camera activities when they do the fast breathing and you know all those you check out this the relaxation response what you are experiencing right now is similar to 
the relaxation response, which will be exactly opposite to stress response. Fight or flight response, what we study, exactly opposite of that is happening. Very slowly and gently, release your hands. I want you to bring your hands closer to each other without touching. Can you feel the warmth of your own hand? Yes. So this is the first technique. Usually I prescribe this. How do I prescribe? I prescribe like I change the mudra. So if somebody is having back pain, I'll use the Meru Danda mudra. I say that, okay, there is a stretch extension of the thumb, extension of the thumb, stretch reflex. This information goes to the brain. You keep it extended. Some uh, pain receptor changes, pain pathway changes. The you know touch and pain are similar, same track changes, and brain forgets about back for some time. Brain forgets about the neck stiffness for some time, trapezius stiffness for some time, erector spinae or multifidus stiffness for some time. Brain forgets, and it will profusely increase endorphins, encephalins, and then might be might be pain reduces. So I change the mudra. Meru Danda mudra I use for back pain people. For you know, this is this is a the fun uh, part of uh, mudra. What I'm teaching is randomly I'm stating the names, but I use this uh, in the form of therapy. The one technique what I told you: breathing in, holding, breathing out. I call this as four 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 breathing technique plus mudra. So when you write a prescription, R X, take a dog. First, breathing four 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 four. Breathing technique plus one mudra, twenty times morning, twenty times evening for first one month. Second month I change six seconds breathing in, four seconds holding the breath, six seconds exhalation. Twenty morning, twenty evening for second month. Third month onwards change it further. Six seconds breathing in, six seconds holding the breath, six seconds exhalation. So I claim that we need to do a research on that. I claim that. the peak flow rate of a person the lung volume there will be some significant change in the lung vo volume in the third month for any person so if somebody is having asthmatic attack if somebody is having uh, uh, repeated uh, bronchitis allergic bronchitis why can't we use simple breathing technique at least it will use it as a dissociative technique patient is you know in, in medical practice we'll have a common uh, discussions amongst the friends doctors ஒன்ீதிங்ன Uh, my patient i want you to do the second one <clears throat> just now somebody was sitting like this you like to sit like this when you are listening to a lecture boring lecture like mine so <laughs> so this is uh, i use this technique with a resonance i claim that you are relaxing the neck muscles uh, supraspinatus uh, uh, sternocleidomastoid and scalene muscles you are relaxing and you are putting your body weight head weight on the hands transmitting on the hands and you are using the form of a resonance to induce a relaxation i want you to note down this word which i want to repeat one more time the relaxation response there is a book i want our uh, uh, it might be there in our library also find out it might be written in uh, 1980s or uh, i'm not sure 79 i think 1979 maybe the book name itself is the relaxation response by dr herbert benson for all the medical doctors when we say harvard medical science this is oh, wow so he is from harvard medical science i think he is he is still alive so he was the greatest inspiration for me to take up other two doctors i, I want to tell you who are living dr uh, tony nadir dr tony nadir as a Basavaraj sir was Basavaraj sir was mentioning uh, Maharshi Mahesh Yogi was the first yoga master who started uh, authentic research in the field of yoga and uh, yoga and uh, ayurveda so he is a successor he is a, uh, dr tony nadir 
from uh, manchester university was a uh, md in uh, brainwave coherence studies so my fascination uh, about his work is he correlated neurophysiology with ramayana with evidence based that blows my mind totally off absolutely off so he correlated the front uh, four lobes of the brain with four padas of patanjali patanjali yoga sutra this is the only indian text in the world which tells about the normal mind when we study the psychology psychotherapy psychiatry we starts with freudian mind right freudian psychology which is partly which observations are partly from an abnormal mind we do not have uh, understanding about the normal mind chitta vritti mental modification number of receptors sorry number of uh, thoughts per minute what per day what you study chitta vritti nirodha so yoga itself they give a very beautiful def- definition if you reduce the number of thoughts to a minimum level and then you have the mind under your control then that is yoga beautiful if our surgeon dr patel sir arin patel sir or anybody any one of our surgeon is operating very absolutely skillfully so that is yoga see the beauty of uh, application of yoga yoga can be anything i am simply sitting and uh, drinking my cup of tea mindfully i'll say definitely you are doing yoga i do not impose any yogic asana on anybody believer non believer but some of these techniques you can do i want you to adopt this i use this in cluster headaches migraine uh, headaches which most of our students have during uh, viva oc or near exam you are using your index finger so these are not studied you are not you will not find this anywhere so those are uh, you know that's a kind of claim anywhere in the sense i compiled this i modified i use this together so your index finger you are closing you do this you chin on the folded palm your index finger is closing the tragus that lead of your ear and little finger is closing your eyes okay i want you to do it okay so what you notice is i want all of you especially students to look at each other's eyes we have very difficult uh, uh, you know we can do the digital gadgetization digitalization is increased number of uh, effortlessly but i'll not to be able to look at somebody else's eyes so i want you to look at the person who is sitting next to you look at their eyes okay so look what look the conjunctiva for any congestion okay so my claim is after this technique what you do there will be an increased blood flow to the conjunctiva that's my claim you prove it because you are research you are sitting next to each other this one is uh, your student you are you are the observer observe is there any change in the blood circulation of your eyes with this technique so there will be significant change shall we do it just like this so this sitting style is called as shakuntala asana shakuntala waiting for her husband dushyanta maharaja at the bank of river i i extend the story then saying that she is very intense uh, sympathetic over activity sympathetic over activity adrenal rush adrenal nor adrenal lot of sympathetic stress uh, flight of flight response flight or flight reflex there is a three organs of your body reduces the blood flow notice this this is again research dr robert sapolsky you must you must must know about him he was from stanford university whose 30 years of research on the baboon monkeys read about it so he says three organs of our body digestive system endocrine system reproductive system wants Uh, will not be having much blood supply when you are stressed okay notice notice this words when you are stressed digestive system reproductive system endocrine system will have reduced blood supply if you are constantly stimulating the sympathetic or sympathetic or activity constantly without coping skills without 
working on the parasympathetic nervous system will end up will end up in sympathetic core activity so again stress response multitasking so these three systems will reduce and symptoms related to these three systems you notice grd motility is reduced constipation because of the stress the gastrin hormone stimulates the gastric mucosa to secrete more hydrochloric acid ends up in gastritis if at all we want to do research is there is already research you can focus so gastrin hormone uh, stomach acidity stress there is a colonic motility if a gastroenterologist is there colonic motility use the technique of yoga or incorporating modern you know we can so once once the corona comes then only is it not so similarly these three digestive endocrine reproductive system will reduce the symptoms are related to that you notice increased heart rate over sensitivity over sensitivity perspiration breathing no so this can be used again i'm coming back to the same topic can be used as an adjuvant i say integrative medicine only i not say alternative medicine alternative is trying to replace the conventional medicine i never want to replace conventional medicine conventional medicine is great but because of the advancement we are losing the human touch we are losing the certain aspect which can be uh, no, non organic causes somatization somatic symptoms can be treated with this incorporation of this so simple example i am giving you is this chakuntalasana close your eyes with your little finger close your ears with putting your index finger on the trigger so taking deep breath in while breathing out all the boys and girls i want you to make a fun sound loud as loud as possible so this is only time for you to make a sound so taking deep breath in breathing out you are going to say a resonant sound of mm sound loudly i'll show you one get ready take a deep breath in and breathing out mm breathing in Mm-hmm. I do not hear the sound from your side. Please do it in sync. Take a deep breath in. Mm-hmm. stop the practice very slowly and gently release the fingers and again look into each other eyes is there any congestion of your eyes ask your person next sitting next to you there will be definite congestion absolutely because it is tested so i use this in refractory headaches cluster headaches migraine So for migraine patient, I advise 20 uh, resonant sounds in Chakuntalasana 20, 20, 20. Do it for about one month, I'll say. At least all the somatic symptoms, whatever they are having, tensions, worries, they are using this as a dissociative technique. At least a dissociative technique, but then it's worthwhile. If with this technique, if they are able to reduce the number of thoughts, if they are able to balance their sympathetic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous system, if they are able to cope up. the uh, sympathetic core activity that's well and good so it will give much more uh, relaxed outlook for a doctor to treat for example 
GERD patients are coming to a doctor, and the doctor is prescribing antacids for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. PPA, proton pump inhibitor. So doctor prescribes, and again patient comes back with the same complaint. Doctor will say, "Arey, what to do? Another set of medicines will prescribe." After six weeks or so, I'll ask them to come back. Again, patient comes with the same complaint. I do not know what's happening with the patient, but I'll only focus on the stomach pain and other gastritis irbodo. For what? Esophagitis irbodo. For what? Definitely somatic symptoms. So in this case, I use. I want you to note down this uh, particular two two questionnaires I use very frequently, like a psychologist. I do not want uh, any psychologist to come in tell me what to do. So I by default I'll use hospital anxiety depression scale. For example, if I give you the scale for all the students of first year MBBS, hospital anxiety depression scale H A D S H A D S. Find out this hospital anxiety depression scale. Fourteen questions, validated questions. It will tell you: Is there anybody moderately anxious or depressed, mild anxious or depressed, or severely anxious or depressed? I'll also use Dr. Goldberger's twenty-eight questionnaire. general health questionnaire ghq i use this simple too because again coming back to the statistics statistics says ncds are more 71 percentage of death ncds are more definitely more so there are hardly any research which will say depression and multiple sclerosis depression and hypertension anxiety and hypertension we hardly say anything anxiety and sleep disorders there are lot of you know sleep medicine is a big subject in itself so the people who are doing regular yoga their deep sleep cycles are more better they can sleep for short duration but their sleep will be complete how come yoga can invade to this many dimensions so there is something about it similarly mudra has something about it i'll give a pause of 1 uh, minute for one question and then we do a relaxation and then we'll wind up So I given two examples of breathing with a mudra and shakuntalasana. Two examples which I practically said. I request all the students to learn this, and when they feel uh, uneasy or stressed up or things, use and find out. Is it helpful for you really? If we are sitting and talking about mudras, I can keep talking, but is it relevant to you? That was that was a our concern. We want to teach you this. Two, I already taught another technique. I'll teach you. These three techniques will be useful for you. So this is our module. For example, if a Jyoti can take it up, this is one module for our uh, first year MBBA, second year MBBA. All the students will evaluate their salivary cortisol. Thirty students, salivary cortisol, blood, lactate, dehydrogenase, uh, stress hormones, other hormones. You find out Lewis P factor. So what is Lewis P factor? You find out. We'll we'll do the physical analysis, blood analysis. and give this three protocols maybe two protocols the breathing definitely, technique and definitely will do sir yeah so breathing technique and the jpmr jpmr i'll uh, teach you which i want it's an evidence based uh, technique i'll allow one minute time for one question so that uh, it will be uh, interactive rather than uh, uh, monologue let it be a dialogue so one question from anybody any senior uh, student I'll take it up, and we'll go for uh, relaxation technique. Anybody wants to ask question? Yeah. Sir, my question, please. Yes, sir. Sir, what is the best time to like? Uh, we should do, do yoga, like as you suggest. Yeah, that's usually commonly. Uh, so simple uh, normal yoga teacher understanding uh, statement say that better is brahmi mahurta 3:30 to you know 5:30 time they say it's the best early morning early morning brahmi mahurta is best yes, i sir. presume i presume maybe maybe i do not know i do not know yet about this maybe morning hour the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis it is working very fine the production of hormones for example testosterone i will see 
thyroid hormone you see the pattern so see the circadian rhythm of the hp axis and maybe morning hours hp axis is working much better because the physical other activities are less yes, the somatic symptoms are less the number of thoughts are less and the nature is congenial the morning uh, number of distractions are less yes, so sir. in that way morning hours are better in correlation with hp axis so you think over this yes yeah okay thank yes okay quickly quickly ask a question later quickly we'll do j p m r later on i'll share the 90 minutes uh, video with you which will be useful for you any time when you stress you use this jacobson was a canadian physician who was absolutely interested in yoga who designed uh, he was not very much interested in taking the religious part spiritual uh, religious part of it and he modified the yoga nidra so when any yoga teacher comes they'll say adap namaskar mudra start om yoga na chitta we will start that so i i i take up this when i go to malaysia I, uh, jyoti was mentioning going to malaysia when i go to Made, malaysia dubai I'll, i'll not use anything i'll my, the moment i use medical yoga there are zero religious uh, content in it asana name can be hanuman asana or nataraja asana anjaneya asana and all those absolutely those are the creator from uh, uh, our bharat but i i use i use all the technical sounds when somebody wants to say om they'll say om no problem somebody wants to say amen you note you note the basic connotation phonation of uh, all these three words amen amen om so there is a resonance so i use the basic principle behind it is resonance so resonance is inducing relaxation and it is causing you relaxation response again herbert benson find out so this is my kind of hypothesis i use any techniques i'll use the resonance if somebody is a non believer of all these three i'll use one okay taking deep breath and saying one okay before uh, the jpmr i want again coming back to the attention span there is one research conducted on om chanting in school they have found a uh, uh, 30 30 group of children they found that intelligence was better finger tapping frontal lobe uh, functioning finger tapping response was much better with the children and their attention span increased with the chanting of om that's one research it says okay now before we go for jpmr uh, jyoti how much time we have 10 minutes another 10 minutes sir okay fine so we'll conclude with that so before we do to do the jpmr we'll have a fun i want all of you to stand up i use this uh, this mudra this mudra is called as garuda mudra so quickly the thumb represents agni index finger represents vayu this was a secret which i didn't want to tell in this class but later on agni vayu the middle finger is a space ring finger is earth little finger is the water when you do this uh, jnana mudra you use index finger and uh, thumb it is a vayu and agni so when i use this interlocking the thumb and holding the hands on the chest this looks like a bird is it not the folded thumb looks like the beak of an eagle so garuda mudra i use garuda mudra to induce catharsis the emotionally uh, pent up emotions bottled up emotions i will bring them out by a uh, technique either we cry or keep or uh, suppress our emotions so i use this technique to bring the emotions out so i modify this is just mudra keeping like this holding like this is a mudra but i modify in the form of pun all the students wants to shout so you are you are going to shout a synchronized way what you are going to do is you are going to hold your hands like this on in front of a chest you to say like this i'll call this as a wow technique w o w w o w wow 
so same wow you are saying synchronized to a extended exhalation note down the point extended exhalation is used by all the gurus irrespective of whatever their background for inducing relaxation response notice this uh, sentence extended exhalation is a key for parasympathetic stimulation so we'll do it so wow you are going to say how you are going to say take a deep breath in wow i'm going to say this as loud as you can let the room resonate with this wow sound and again going to bring back with both hands in front of the chest okay all of us all of us together maybe three counts with the permission from all our seniors let us all of us do this fun plus definitely catharsis take a deep breath in keep both hands on your chest take, take a deep breath in wow i could not hear any of your sounds slowly bring your hands back onto the chest so there is a permission from seniors do it another two times take a deep breath in wow slowly and gently bring your hands back onto the garuda mudra one more time there is some changes in your feeling emotions you feel light definitely you see that one more time last time with all full strength and emotion take a deep breath in wow slowly and gently bring your hands back onto the chest in garuda mudra sit down sit down comfortably sit down sit down please you feel little light in your emotion the space mind space nanchant uh, hindu scriptures describes about uh, 14 lokas so my depiction is these lokas might to be might be the mind space when you calm down your mind space to a certain level the vibration of those frequencies are different which has a healing frequencies which might go beyond we have heard about uh, ncds and sympathetic core activity what happens if there is a parasympathetic dominance my mind goes and taps certain uh, unusual uh, you know like how the dogs hear extra decibels of sound we might tap some extra sensory metaphysical parapsychological uh, phenomenon we might so that is what we in yogic language they call it as siddhis the beauty of uh, dr uh, tony nadir he describes the siddhis uh, the hormones as anuman absolutely stunning hormone says hanuman hanuman can become small hanuman can become big is a story they not seen so he correlates the hanuman as a hormone and the hormones can become small action of the hormones can be big and can be small beautiful correlation another doctor is dr mehmet oz cardiothoracic surgeon who uses pomegranate juice and yoga therapy before and after cardiothoracic surgeries another research says the umbilical cord blood supply can change based on if you are using a resonance technique breathing technique umbilical cord blood supply changes already proven this such okay all of you sit down we'll go for okay jpmr is not possible i think i'll share the uh, video of jpmr and i'll pause it for a moment let me 8 minutes we have so jpmr is a jacobs i'll tell you what it is and then i'll give you the link for that so why i use jpmr why i don't use the yoga nidra when i go out of india i'll become like a guruji i'll wear all this i'll keep some more beard i'll put tilak and all those i'll wear rudraksh mala i i use the the inclination to be revered like a sit down sit down please but when in india i use more scientific aspect because we are uh, basically we do not listen to anyone basically we need convincing absolutely convincing ideas for us to practice even if even after giving convincing ideas we do not practice that's a tendency another homework for students you find out uh, laziest countries in the world you find out what is the, in india is already improving but still 
but the heritage of india should come to forefront with evidence based that is a that's a message what i want to share that is only possible with evolved students and uh, you know sharira madhyam kalu dharma sadhanam so the some shloka says that so only through understanding the human body the right dharma is possible so you are greatest uh, you know advantage for you to work on the mind spirit because you are already working on the body you are the greatest medical doctors are the greatest especially the conventional mbbs medical doctors i i i, I say this because there are less you know there's one book by name post mbbs career so in india there is a huge competition lab and all those exams you should keep writing and then run so that part we'll discuss sometime later when we visit uh, in person uh, that will keep the topic separately so jp uh, jpmr is a neuromuscular relaxation technique i'll just only tell what it is and then we'll conclude neuromuscular relaxation technique there are more than 3000 plus research articles only on this one first research on shavas first research on yoga was on shavasana shavasana could reduce uh, the blood pressure by 20 to 30 mm of mercury that has a proven research article on shavasana so jpmr there are more research articles how jpmr helps in neck pain back pain knee pain hypertension somatization anxiety issues so jacobson's progressive muscular relaxation technique jacobson uses the biorhythm of the body of a contraction being aware of that and tightening the muscles for about 5 seconds for example and relaxing the muscles for about another 5 seconds so being aware of this duality of contraction and relaxation when your mind is positioned in that particular muscle group for certain time maybe for 5 seconds the biorhythm of the body changes when this part, this particular muscles the initial part is like this you can do it i want you to do it only small one make a fist of your hand tighten your forearm as tight as you can hold it for about 5 seconds full tight 1 2 3 4 5 release really? make your hands like this bicep hold your biceps as tight as you can for 5 seconds be aware of it 1 2 3 4 5 release so this relaxation starts progressive why it is progressive one muscle group after other muscle group progressive muscular you are using skeletal muscle as a tool for a biorhythm relaxation it will induce the relaxation response technique jpmr so it, it goes 13 parts of the body forearm muscles flexor and extensor your arm then trapezius then forehead frontalis then eyeball muscles then jaw then orbicularis oculi uh, sorry oris tongue uh, platysma chest holding the breath for 5 seconds and breathing out abdomen tightening your rectus abdominis uh, holding it for about 5 seconds and releasing but as gluteus maximus group of muscles quadriceps you are holding it tight for about 5 seconds and releasing below knee till the tip of the toes holding it tight for 5 seconds and releasing 13 parts of the body sequentially contracting for 5 seconds relaxing for 5 seconds is a sequence of um, the jpmr i use this invariably for everyone it reduces lot of uh, somatization stress induced uh, uh, physical complaints uh, or other disease so i i minimum tell them for 40 days so i'll share you the link of uh, jpmr how to do it uh, i'm done with, with the same background i'll share it with you with this i'll uh, give a pause for a moment to conclude that mudra is a science where the subtlety of the mudra is less understood in the general population and amongst the general yoga students we use hardly use dhyana mudra one to uh, maybe bodhisattva mudra or some other dhyana mudra we will use you know so it is less limited part if we can do some research articles some small scale research like one of the ayangar bk sanga student who was a cardiologist has done uh, scanning ultrasound scanning of uh, body different positions when you doing sarvangasana what is the jugular pulse what is happening and you are you know cardiac output what is happening so those kind of things you can plan 
So small, small research articles. Maybe one mudra, if it is pertaining to, if it is, if this is called as uh, prana mudra. In this prana mudra, is there any part, particular part of the? Uh, if you do, for example, PET scan. PET scan. Is there any change in the uh, dopamine dominant areas? Is there any change? For example, another research article: the long-term practitioners of yoga, their amygdala and hippocampal area is large, so their emotional balance will be much better. There are very different uh, uh, mind-blowing uh, uh, research are already there, but uh, we only need to know it. And if uh, doctors can implement, they can implement to the best of their ability. So in that manner, this class is only a stimulation or motivation for you to take up something for your stress response first. And then, if it is helping for you to reduce your stress amongst your uh, the the MBBS studies. So then we can publish one or two research articles and plus you now same things can be used and adopted elsewhere. So that is the goal of uh, this particular um, session. And uh, I thought, what I thought was uh, Shankamudra with uh, breathing technique, four seconds breathing in, four seconds holding the breath, four seconds exhalation as a tool, as a prescription. So what is the prescription? Four, four, four plus four, 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 four breathing technique plus one mudra. What is one mudra? I can share it. For back pain, different mudra. For diabetes, I use Apana Vayu mudra. For uh, heart disease, I use Hridaya mudra. For uh, you know, for anxieties, I use Garuda mudra. So many things. So mudra changes, breathing technique remains same. My claim is the peak flow rate of uh, the body lungs will change, lung function will change. So if you do it for about three months, first month is four four four, second month six four six, third month uh, six six six, and then you continue. Lung volume increases. The disease frequency will reduce. Oxygen availability will better. Disease you can fight much better. Coping skills will, will be better. Second one I told told is Shakuntalaasana with uh, resonance. Resonance is inducing relax. Definitely. Third one I told uh, the JPMR introduction. Jacobson's progressive muscular relaxation technique introduction. This is a kind of package. One two package. One breathing technique. One uh, headache uh, relieving technique. One uh, relaxation technique can be used anywhere. So these three, and uh, we conclude the class. And any questions we have, we'll uh, uh, can answer. But this will open our minds to a new dimension and subtlety of yoga. So my only motive is all of us, all all the doctors everywhere, whatever is their field, they are true karma yogis. Believe it or not, they sacrifice their sleep, their family time, and everything for the sake of patient. So, so this class is dedicated to all the doctors, all the yoga masters worldwide, all the teachers, all the parents, all the children. So with this, uh, we conclude the class. Thank you. I am open for uh, any one or two questions. I request uh, Chair uh, Dr. Ishwar Basavaradi. Yeah. Ishwar Basavaradi. Yeah. Sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jyoti. So I am very fortunate to listen so many things. I had uh, two, three important uh, comments. One is uh, uh, there are three words in the entire topic. One is scientific, spiritual, and mudra. So these are the two, uh, three dimensions. Uh, Dr. Shashikant uh, uh, would like to make justice for these through and make how mudras are presented in a scientific manner and also awakening the spiritual quest within the mind. So uh, first of all, uh, if you see in uh, yoga, mudras, why, uh, what is the purpose of mudra? yoga if you see a very serious student of uh, yoga so it is called neuromuscular coordination simple so the terminologies you are all medical students you use the terminologies in the medical terminologies 
but yoga people use their terminologies nadi skanda and uh, tantra so there are certain uh, terminologies used by the yogis so only thing is uh, we have to coordination because uh, shashikant would like to convey you in your language and in your language is mudras are mentioned to bring the neuromuscular coordination one then why they are uh, mentioned so the second one is uh, uh, to harness the uh, mind by mind uh, i take two one is the emotions and thoughts how to manage and balance the emotions and thoughts by bringing balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity so as mentioned by dr shashikant any yoga activity it may be nadi shodhan pranayam it may be surya namaskar or anything if you do properly neither it stimulates nor it uh, uh, reduce any activity it brings balance between the uh, sim- uh, sympathetic parasympathetic coordination so that's the way how mudras are helping this is a second third one is in the how they are helping for the spiritual awakening so there are two types of uh, systems in yoga and there are many but majorly two one is vedanta we are leading the spiritual life where it is philosophical in nature the second one is the tantric and third one is the sankhya yoga and like this there are many systems when you talk about uh, uh, tantra there are he mentioned about only 100 and few odd techniques but in uh, swara yoga and others there are many hatha yoga text i am so happy uh, um, he is talking about the kashmiri shaivism and the text from kashmira shaivism here praying 112 mudras but in when we are doing the uh, traditional knowledge digital library we search many of such mudras in the ancient text but uh, literally one or two sentences but there is no meaning but if you really go to the philosophy and understand the technology and you will understand the entire science behind it therefore the third one is when you go to systematize this spiritual awakening how it happens it happens with the ashuddhik shaya cleansing and uh, somebody has asked the uh, some question what is the best time to practice yoga really if you want to have a uh, lead to the health promotion or spiritual awakening so then the best why it is chosen the best timing in the morning so there are many uh, issues once yoga should be pra- practiced with the emptying all our toxins removing toxins the bowel movements the urine the empty stomach and also the minimize thoughts morning time they are not over burden because mind is relaxed so then yoga is more fruitful it is evidence so that's why uh, our uh, yogis are uh, scientific and more than scientific but only thing we have to understand the technology about that therefore so detoxification uh, for is very much compulsory for the performing mudras of hatha yoga mudras for spiritual awakening so that uh, shashikant has to understand detoxification is compulsion because unless you detoxify at the uh, uh, ghata or the physical level or uh, neuromuscular level is removing the we call them as the knots or the blocks so that's why there are certain bandhas to go, uh, perform uddiyana and other bandhas uh, jalandra bandha juwa bandhas there are many bandhas lock and channelize the energy just like a, we are channelizing the Uh, water in the reserve from the reservoir so these are all the very simple techniques so that the entire energy from the kanda that is the mooladhara or even from the coccygeal region you know that the entire system of spinal cord and the connection with the brain and most importantly the vagus what we are talking about and you know the how your vagus functions i don't want to end. the entire mudras are going to have impact on the vagus now vegas is very very important that's why you use sometime the breathing techniques the ratios uh, one is to two you are and the end of the time you ex- prolong the exhalation not only prolonging but also there is a ratio ratio of prolonging how much you want to exhale one is to two one is to four one is to three one is to eight 
so to certain level and these are all the things and who are practicing it regularly they experience they evolve accordingly for particular disease condition particular emotional psycho emotional uh, these things and these uh, technologies have been adopted and uh, many people doesn't know this because it needs lot of personal practice so uh, explaining in scientific manner is another one because we need the medical knowledge but uh, mere medical knowledge is not sufficient to understand these uh, technologies because the medical person even shashikant has to practice it so then he confirm then he has to go to many people and uh, uh, 10 people also have the same type of uh, experiences and same type of results then it is confirmed again each individual is unique because uh, they are working on your emotional and psychological level so there the uh, every individual is not the same every individual is unique therefore again as you in medical system we recommend different dosages for the different system the matra of the mudras has to be vary and accordingly the results will be coming so once a yoga teacher or a master what we call them or uh, many names are given so i saw that he should be a sadhaka and who understand this technology what uh, shashikant would like to say there is a philosophy and many people confined to philosophy but if philosophy converted into a science science into the technology technology into the appliances what we are giving in terms of capsules or the medicines and yoga practices has to come up to that level so that it will be integrated in the medical system so this is my understanding lastly yeah. how it relate to the spiritual awakening so simple way what is spirituality and there's one of the vague term in the philosophy or in the science many people misunderstood for common people spirituality is believing in god or not believing god going to the temple uh, following religious uh, practices some people call it oh he is very spiritual person no simple is a uh, spiritual is always you are having the nitya which is permanent which is shashwata satya which is truth ever changing principle so if your life is leading towards the nitya and satya so from the anitya to the satya from finite to the infinite that journey is a spiritual journey and mudras are the uh, path some of the paths if you are going to the higher level for finite to infinite from the so anitya to the nitya and satya to the satya that's why asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya mrityorma amrutangamaya so these are all the call we chant in the schools colleges etc but we never understood the the essence of these shlokas and these shlokas i converted them into the models so their models has been tested now they have been in the public domain so people are using them as a medicine or the capsules or we call them a protocol so such type of uh, things are very essential and today's talk is very very like uh, in the beginning i made uh, five six comment because i do know that shashikant being a medical person will uh, touch all these things he had touched the preventive medicine he touched the uh, uh, integrative medicine he touched the the last health promotion everything and i do hope that uh, uh, my preliminary remarks and uh, the remarks are uh, definitely are in line with uh, his speech and uh, uh, very good questions and very good uh, uh the uh, listeners you got so for a teacher what we want we want a very good response everybody is doing yoga and stretching and all these things so always i enjoy the workshops not only talk and uh, i am practicing they are doing it they are experiencing it what i say they experience it so that gives the confidence in yoga so yoga is a is a practice unless you practice it we cannot experience what is it with these few words once again i thank the professor sumangla madam and jo dr jyoti and uh, all other faculty members it's a such a wonderful mm -hmm. students who are sitting thank you one and all i do hope that uh, will again associate such a wonderful talk thank you jai thank, thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much hello hello dr now, jyoti now i request uh, hello dr ishwar facility sir to kindly present certificate e certificate to dr shashikant kumbar sir thank you approve hello dr jyoti yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah, yeah. just before you ending 
just can i can i can i say a few words i am yes, dr sir. kushal dash yes sir yes sir yes sir hello hiya uh, thank you dr jyoti thank you very much yes, uh, thank you dr ishob bashareddy sir thank you honorable director and thank you to the speaker uh, distinguished speaker and extraordinary speaker as my must i say dr shashi khan it was amazing to listen the yoga the indian ancient wisdom with the mouth and the knowledge brain synchronization from a medical person and i really enjoyed dr ishar bashavari this chairman interact uh, this comments specifically the here the two persons who are practicing yoga knowledge in yoga is like ocean one from the medicine other from the physics the very interesting to strong medicine and strong physics background how it evolved and really incorporate the ancient wisdom in a true spirit of indian history and culture both of them have shown so it is really honor to be here and i really enjoyed today to be a part of it to join with the great speaker and specifically our proud alumni of bld university and dr isha basharavdi who is my very good friend since long time thank you very much dr jyoti thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request, uh, sir, Ishwar, but Dr. Ishwar Basavreddy, sir, to kindly present certificate to Dr. Shashikant Kumbhar, sir. Yes, it's my privilege, and just uh, I'm transferring this seat certificate to Dr. Shashikant. Thank you, sir. It's a great honor to receive from you. Thank you very much. Thank you all the best. Hope so. We'll uh, again meet in uh, some other sure. platforms. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now I request Professor Kusal K. Das, distinguished chair, yes, Professor B. L. D. Deemed to be university, to kindly present certificate to uh, Dr. Ishwar Basavreddy, sir, Director, Muraji Desai National Institute of Yoga, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India. Thank you, Dr. Yoti. It is really my honor and. proud privilege to confer this certificate to one of the greatest scientist yoga scientist physicist and one of the great scholar and who prevail the indian culture is throughout the globe dr ishar bashavareddy dr ishar bashavareddy i am really feeling proud to be associated with you and today in this occasion to confer the certificate of honor to your kind self kindly accept our honor thank you very much thank you, sir thank you it is my privilege sir i am fortunate to receive from your hand thank you sir namaskar thank you thank you so much sir now it is the time to thank everyone i sincerely thank dr ishwar basavreddy sir to uh, for accepting our invitation and chairing today's session i thank you uh, sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you very much i extend my heartfelt thanks to dr shashikant kumbhar sir for accepting our invitation and uh, giving a wonderful lecture and experiencing us about different mudras thank you so much sir thank you it's a great honor bld du family faculty students i thank everyone for supporting us and i especially i thank uh, it department for uh, supporting us thank you so much thank you one and all thank you shall i take a leave jyoti yes sir yes sir uh, yes. thank you thank you for bearing me because now i am in the airport <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so I much know. sir thank you sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs>